Hello and welcome back to another vlog episode here in Gurung Vlogger ng Kuwait. And we are back to introduce a new topic. So make sure to like and subscribe before watching. Hello everyone, today I'll be introducing making sense of media making, frames of story. Significant value news since it's our primary source of knowledge and our primary knowledge of intelligence, neighborhood, country, and the globe. I said from Marshall, public opinion, news organization, are seen as authorized agencies. We have already established that all media information texts are constructed in the process of planning, producing, and creation of these texts. Choices to have been made. The producers and creators of the choices, their choices reflect their opinions. Values, opinion, and the point of view of others simply zero into a central image and may even take opinion an option of use, literally as a structure. Sound surrounds something in the case of picture. These are imaginary four lines that are from a square border scene that will be rendered in a short. In a media production, frames are tools utilized by media creators and Producers tell their stories for new stories and journalists to provide angle by which to tell the new story platform by which to launch the story in the earlier example from angle which we viewed the story was the presidential sister to the country and and the point of view on poverty and its causes but for, for granted the exclusion of con con uh, contrary point of view had some effects on the way of the story across the on the public is the one sided of the uh, opinion the process of exclusion uh, and exclusion is the best illustrated by the way we frame an event or a scene before we click the shutter of our cameras some do it with a deliberate choice most of the time guided by the conversation of composition in the photograph or the simply zero or uh, in a to a central image and may even take the option of blurring the background drones in this case uh, the frame is used literally as a structure that surrounds something in the case of the picture these are the imaginary four lines from a square border can I see causes by a foreground for one thing they will have a frame media stories so their content and frame as well as their meaning can be shattered, shared by a huge segment of society. Choices, uh, inevitability, bear on values, opinions, and point of view media creators and producers. Every decision they make, life starts to portray opinions expressed by major characters and their actions in the plot are, in, are unfolded in the media text. Uh, the exclusive part of the uh, media is shared by the government. Uh, okay. Choices in the executive running and newsroom make decisions about the chronology of the program which makes it should wake, make up the headline portion of it. Therefore, should come first and what should come last based on the shared culture experiences it was that come first are of the national importance and those that come last bear the last significance lifestyle and entertainment stories uh, Nietzsche concerns the reasons why they are called soft news We all have values or point of views as well as lifestyle choices and attitude towards others. So status quo in Latin terms, it means existing state of affair or in other words, current situation or the things, the way things are now. Let's say the current condition of affair of the status quo is characterized by powerful relationship that favor the small part of a society that exerts economic and political power. If we narrow it down to specifics, these are the principles that help to tolerate discrimination 
exclusion and marginalization in our society. We define values as the standards of behavior or might also refer to the principles, beliefs, and views on what is right or wrong. Now there are the so-called types of these values and number one it is the personal values. Now these can be our desirable goals that motivate our actions and guide us through our lives. These are also the beliefs that we hold most dear. Through values, it can reflect our personality. They became part of us and influence our decisions and actions. The importance of this is to increase self-awareness, to know who we truly are, or our weaknesses and our strengths, our faults and our skills. Number two, spiritual values. The values of human soul that is effective in leading spiritual growth of personality. It is also direct to our actions and decisions with regards to higher power. Number three, terminal values. Values that we think are the most important and these are the goals a person would like to achieve during his or her lifetime. Number four, instrumental values. Values that deal with acceptable modes of conductor of achieving the terminal values. To give the definition for attitude, attitude is our response to people, things, and events. It can be referred to a person's point of view, mindset, or beliefs. In cognitive psychology, attitude may be described as predisposition to react favorably or unfavorably to a situation. The different types of attitudes are Number one, positive attitude. This is the good outlook of a person. They chose to think what is right and the good side of things. They will not consider a mistake or failure as a hurdle, but an opportunity, like me. <laughs> Number two is negative attitude. Obviously, the opposite of positivity. It is the negative things in life you attract. They are the people that ignores the good and pay attention to the bad ones. Hmm, I don't think I would recommend you having a negative attitude, although I know sometimes life doesn't favor you, but there is no reason for us to be negative all the time. So keep positive always. Number three is neutral attitude. So these are the people who doesn't give enough importance to situations and events. A person who doesn't feel the need to change. Now, through values and attitudes, it could also be expressed in media. Things that we see can influence our attitude. The environment that we live can also give a change to our values. That's why we should be aware of our values and attitudes because it helps us to identify what are we doing and why are we doing it. Thank you and that's my part. Let us hear from Gian. Now that we've talked about what values and attitudes are, let's talk about lifestyles. Everyone has their lifestyle, of course. We all know it's how a person lives their lives, but let me give a formal definition for it for the sake of this lesson. Lifestyles are ways of living and denote the interests, hobbies, behaviors, opinions of an individual, family, group, or even a community. So ranging from an individual to family, group, or even a community, lifestyles show us how people live. Like an outgoing family that likes to walk outside in the park every weekend, or a family that loves music and they play as a band. Additionally, there are elements that render a predisposition of how a person or a group lives their lives. So there are two elements that render a lifestyle an individual is predisposed to live to and these are one tangible elements and the second is intangible elements so first off tangible elements are for the most part about your social class whether you are placed in the lower class middle class or the more fortunate class this social class people have are determined by certain materials and spaces you have in life. 
Intangible elements, on the other hand, are where our values and attitudes come into play. Values, as you know, are one's behaviors and beliefs. Attitudes are how our, how our expressions of our responses to an event or occasion are. So here's an example. Take a look at a rich family. The usual rich family that lives in a gated village where family leisure and expensive hobbies are a valued practice. At first sight, you could really see their tangible elements and probably the intangible elements too. They're placed in the first class. They have high income and a lot of material possessions. Those are the tangible elements. These give influence to the intangible elements. People who are born and raised from this environment often prefer leisure over work because of the possessions that they have. Thus, it's easy to describe what lifestyle they're predisposed to live. Now let's talk about what relations does this topic have to our main lesson, making sense of media making frames of a story. Media exposes the ex audience to vastly different lifestyles in which can be entirely different from their own. Examples of lifestyles in media can be reality shows, home vlogs whether it is done by a family or by an individual, and these home vlogs that are posted on YouTube. Local television programming that most of the time air shows have rich and powerful lifestyle. All these are also there to inspire the audience of a new lifestyle. As well as mass advertising, it encourages people to patronize products that promote different lifestyles. Even more, when social media is very present in today's society, we gain a lot of information on things and actions that is said to be factual and, and benefiting tips that positively improve lifestyle. And because of these, media can perpetuate or give way to changing the status quo or how things are right now. Media perpetuating the status quo does not mean it's naturally positive, nor is it negative. The perpetuation of the status quo means there is a change, and changes can also be for a good cause. But people are resistant to the change because changes, of course, involve risks. So that's a reason why people are resistant to the perpetuation of the status quo. Media changing the status quo of people's lifestyle can be positive depending on the information given and the influence it has on them. There are a lot of advice out there that is suitable for different kinds of people. If one advice does not work for you, then you could also try searching for other options to help influence you. People are also subject to change, and when media showcase values like thriftiness, people get influenced a sort of entrepreneur-like entrepreneur mindset. When people are shown dedication to a routine, they are influenced to do stuff like exercise. Now let's move on to propaganda and persuasion. Propaganda has been the studied and as history, journalism, political science, sociology, and psychology, as well as from an interdisciplinary perspective. To study propaganda as history is to examine the practices of propagandists as events to the subsequent event as possible effect of propaganda. To consider uh, propaganda as journalism is to understand how news management or spin shape information emphasizing positive features and downplaying negative ones casting institutions in a favor favorable light. To examine propaganda in the light of political science is to analyze the ideologies of practitioners and the dissemination and impact of public opinions. To approach propaganda as sociology is to look social movements and counter-propaganda that emerge in oppositions. To investigate propaganda as psychology is to determine its effects on individuals. 
Propaganda is also viewed by some scholars as interhead thought and practice in mass culture. A more recent trend that draws on more of this allied field is to study of propaganda as the purveyor of ideology and to this end. This largely a study of how dominant ideological meanings and constructed which within the mass media. Ento ethnographic research is one way to de determine whether the people on receiving and accept on resist dominant ideological meanings. This book approaches to study of propaganda as type of communications. Persuasion, another ca category of communications, is to examine the terms propaganda persuasions have been used interchangeability in the literature on propaganda as well as everyday speech. Propaganda employs persuasive strategies but it differs from persuasion in purpose. A communication approach to the study of propaganda enables us to isolate its communic communicative variables to determine the relationships of message context to examine intentionally to examine the response and responsibilities to of the audience and to trace the development of of propagandist communications as a process we believe there is a need to evaluate propaganda in contemporary context free from value laden, laden um, definitions our objectives are provide to consist examinations of propaganda and persuasions to examine the role of propaganda as the as aspects of communication studies and analyze propaganda as the part of social, religious, and political systems throughout the history and contemporary times. That's all for the video and yet and again, please like, like and subscribe. Thank you.